The pull-based nature of HTTP requires the client to make a new request to the server each time it wants to check if new data is available. This isn't ideal for creating real-time web applications. Ideally, we would want to use more of a push model, where the server sends data down to the client without the client having to request it. SignalR currently supports three different techniques for handling real-time communication. Web sockets, server sent events, and long polling. SignalR will by default use negotiation between the client and the server to determine the technique to use based on the capabilities of each. Let's go over all three so we can see how they work. WebSockets allow two-way communication between the browser and the server. Once the initial connection is established, the server makes additional calls to the server through the existing connection. As well, the server can send data to the clients through this long-established connection without the client needing to make any additional requests. How does this work exactly? Well, let's take a look. HTTP provides the ability for a connection to upgrade to a new protocol, such as WebSockets. As described earlier, the initial request must be made by the client. In this request, the client will request an upgrade through the Upgrade and Connection headers. If the server accepts the upgrade, it will send back a 101 HTTP status code, including the Upgrade and Connection headers to describe the chosen protocol. Once the WebSockets connection is established, the server can now send data to the clients. The client can also make a request back to the server with the same connection. It's a bi-directional communication. Having bi-directional communication now means we can move to a push model. Instead of HTTP's pull model, as described earlier, we can now push data to the clients from the server. The WebSockets connection will remain open until either side decides to close the connection. The connection can be closed if the browser is closed or if the page is refreshed. Server sent events are one-way messaging. The client initiates the connection, and then the server can stream events down to the client. With server sent events, it's possible for the server to send new data to a web page at any time by pushing the message to the web page. These incoming messages can be treated as events with data inside the web page. Unlike web sockets, these connections are only directional from the server to the client. The server can send streams of data down to the client, but the client cannot make any additional requests with this connection. One thing to note about server sent events is they're not supported by Microsoft Internet Explorer or Edge. Let's take a look how it works. The initial request sent by the client with an accept header of text slash event dash stream. The server will respond with an HTTP 200 OK and a content type of text slash event dash stream. The body of the response will be a stream of data, very similar to if your browser was downloading a file. At a high level, there will be a data in the response with a blank line telling the browser to process the event. In this case, we are sending hello world, which will be processed by the browser. At some point, our server might push down more data, which again will contain an empty line indicating the end of the event data. Once this empty line is received, the browser will process the event. There are many interesting aspects to server sent events, such as identifying, naming, and reconnecting. If server sent events are the best choice based on the browser connecting to the server, then it will be used by SignalR. Long polling is a fairly old technique used to retrieve data from the server before WebSockets or server sent events existed. The basic idea is the client makes a request to the server, and the server holds on to that request until it has data to provide. Once the server responds with data, as normal, the connection is closed. At this point, the client will immediately reconnect to the server and the cycle continues. Those are the three techniques SignalR uses to enable real-time communication. Again, by default, SignalR will perform a negotiation between the client and the server to determine which to use. This is based on the capabilities of the client and the server.